Welcome back to the next stage of our slicer settings for my flash print tutorial video series. So we are now looking at infill having previously checked out shells, general and printer in the tabs on the left hand side of our slicer dialog box or thingy. So infill what it is, it's the material that it gets printed within our shells or walls of our model that provides both support and strength to our finished print. Pretty simple to understand, I guess. Uh, the next sections to that we're going to affect our infill are general, speed, combine infill, strength infill. Starting with general, we have a option for our top and bottom solid layers so this is the value for our vertical shell counts basically so that's like the uh, the floor and the roof of our model so you know a, a higher value there will provide greater strength same as you know increasing the amount of shells you've got is going to provide uh, well, greater strength again now the other thing worth noting is you know especially with the bottom solid layers is that's the floor of our model so having a few more layers down there will actually or can be beneficial as we go further up and some profiles see this decrease or increase to reflect that. The next bit is our fill density. So this is a percentage value for the amount of infill to be used within the model. 100% being solid, 0% is completely empty. As to what you will need, it uh, depends on the model, depends on the filament that you're using. Uh, ASA, for example, doesn't like using less than 20 or 25%, depending upon the brand. It just isn't happy with low infills but pla for example you can actually run uh nearly hollow in some situations so it actually doesn't require as much it's just you know that different filament is you know it's going to provide it's going to need different uh different settings so you can look on the box research online to find the fill density that you need and also some models that you find will also uh state that you know you can print this with I don't know, 10% fill or no fill. Um, I think an example was actually the articulated dragon on Colts 3D that stated, I think, that you could do it with 10%. But that's that's an example of what that setting is there and why would we why would be actually changing it. The next section is fill pattern. So we have four different shapes that we can actually choose from, choose from here. This is how our infill is actually going to get printed. So lines are the first option and flash print state is also the fastest uh, infill option the next is hexagon and this is another weird one a flash print actually state that hexagon is the strongest infill um, my research has actually led me to believe that triangle is the strongest shape um, a quick google search will actually show that as well but you know the tooltip says otherwise so which you use is entirely up to you i believe look hexa got a triangle would both provide plenty of strength anyway it just depends on how much you use um flash print does say that the triangular um shape does provide more cohesiveness between layers uh, and i guess it's in how it is printed it is printed a little funny it is actually pretty hard to explain how it's printed so my best advice would be to actually try using it and then watching it while it gets printed to see the actual shape because it is quite interesting. The final option is 3D info, which is really good for low fill densities. It's meant to use small amounts of filament and it's not something I've really used. It's an interesting shape from what I remember. It's like little squiggles, I, <laughs> I think I'm gonna call it. Lots of little squiggles, but again, not something that I've personally used. The next section is our overlap perimeter. Now, overlap perimeter is a setting you might remember from our shell section as well. We've got 30% there. We've got 15% here. So, I, I think, you know, although it's the same setting, I think the actual percentage affects the different sections of the print. So, um, when, the uh, sorry, when the infill is getting printed, it'll allow a 15% overlap with our exterior walls. When our exterior walls are getting printed, it'll allow a 30% overlap with the infill section. So that is a little bit of assumption there because the tooltip between them doesn't actually change. So again, if you want to see these, you can hover over the various options and it'll provide these tooltips for us. 
The next part is vase mode, vase mode, however you pronounce that. Again, not something I've used a great deal. However, this is a an option that's very regularly um, asked about. You know, what is it? What's it good for? Should I use it? Why should I use it? And how should I use it? So, what vase mode does is it's a setting to actually print a vase, a vase, you know, that sort of container-like object, for lack of a better way of describing it. So what it is, it's a single shell empty model. So no wall, uh, no roof, I should say, no roof, no infill, and a single layer shell count. With And it's also meant to delete the seam at the same time, so it's meant to be nice and cohesive. So by selecting yes on that, we notice that we lose our top solid layers. Our fits, fill density doesn't change, however, but if we go and slice our hexagonal nightmare here, which is a model I whipped up in about 30 seconds on uh, Blender. So you can see here, it's a solid shape. And when we load it up, it's a solid shape. We don't get any uh, error messages. When we go to our slicer um, preview, we are missing a roof. There is absolutely no infill. We still have three bottom layers as we specified, but what we're seeing here is just a a pentagon vase, vase thing. So again, solid shape to open shape. So you know you can make something in whatever your you know whatever your 3D model program of choice is. As I, as I mentioned, I use Blender. You can do it in Tinkercad. You can make yourself a shape in there, um, and you know going into 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 vase mode will you know, hollow it out basically. So, you know, we can turn this into like some sort of weird pentagon bowl by scaling the top face out to, you know, angle it into a bowl-like shape and, you know, vase mode would then make it hollow for us. So we wouldn't need to, you know, delete this top face in, in Blender to make it work. But, you know, that's a, that's a different thing. I'm getting a little bit off topic here, so sorry about that. Let's get back into the actual infill settings. So we're gonna turn that off to keep on going. Okay, so speed. That is the uh, the next section to look at, which is still referencing our base print speed in the general settings uh, section that we looked at previously. So solid speed is the print time or print speed, sorry, for our top and bottom solid layers. So that'll be 70% of the value set previously. And a sparse speed is the infill, so the interior speeds. So that's gonna get printed at full speed. So the solid speed generally gets slowed down because it will be a visible surface. Sparse speed, you're not going to see it unless you've got holes in your print somehow. So that's what those two values are there. The next section is combine infill. So what is combine infill? What that is, it's basically... Uh, I actually have the, um, the, my notes here. So it allows the machine to combine overlapped infill to speed up print time. So the infill will be thicker. However, the shell thickness will be unchanged. So maximum solid combine is one. How these values actually change, I'm not too sure. It, it's just a singular number. There's no fraction, so it's not like a 0 0.2 or anything else like that. It's just, yeah, it doesn't tell you a great deal. So it says, you know, it says the combined layer height of solid infill is suggested not to exceed more than 0.2 millimeters, but uh, how you'd actually set that, I couldn't tell you. The standard settings from Flashprint are one and two in here. The next little bit here, which is combined area area threshold, is a little bit easy to understand. So what that is, it's a limiting value, so it provides a limit on the combined infill. If a layer is below this size here, so 150 millimeters squared, combine infill will not be used. It's not gonna be done. The final section is our strength infill. So strength infill is basically at certain layers, it'll add a solid layer or layers based on what you enter to increase the, you know, the strength of the finished model. So the interval layers is basically the value of how many infill layers between our solid layers. So it starts off as zero, meaning none. Your next option is 10, so every 10 layers we will have one solid layer. 
or two solid layers, or three, four, five, you know, etc., whatever you actually want it to be. The higher this number, the less infill layers will actually have, I'm sorry, the less solid layers will actually have. Lower the number, but greater than two, oh, sorry, greater than zero, don't know where I got that from, is going to provide a larger amount of solid layers. So again, this is for adding strength to our finished product by just basically providing extra bracing at different sections. The absolute last options we can play with is another control list, similar to what we had in our printer section, so our temp control, our general section with our variable layer heights. In infill, we can add variable infill. So I have already put in some settings here because this is take two of this video. A start layer of 20, an end layer of 150 and a density of 100% to keep it nice and simple. So what that means is after our three bottom layers, the printer is going to run 15% fill density up until it reaches layer 20. From layer 20 to layer 150, it'll be a solid infill 100% or whatever figure you've put here. From 150 up until the top three solid layers, it'll be running back at 15%. Or if we were to go into here and go 150 to 160, whatever, to 55. Uh, something's gone wrong, that's right, because I need to do 151. It'll then go down from 151 to do this value here. And again, you can have multiple different controls here. So you can start off at like 100%, and then every layer you could drop it down a percent if you really want to spend that long, you know, entering these controls. To delete them, select the uh, the row and the little bin button will be able to be used, it won't be greyed out, and you can just hit it to delete them as you need. Again, this little option, this checkbox is actually uh, checked from, um, from the factory profiles because, look, realistically, you might as well leave it on there. Without an actual control added, it does absolutely nothing. So that is our infill controls or infill settings within the slicer um, if you do have any further questions you're more than welcome to drop them in the uh, the comments below um, alternatively as I've said in pretty much all the other videos if you're not already a member of the uh, flash forge community support groups on Facebook it is definitely worth getting on there they are supported by members from the actual flash forge company so generally you can get some pretty good support pretty quick uh, the next section is going to be on supports, potentially also having a look at raft, depending upon how long that takes, and I hope you'll join me for that one.